This short seminar is designed to unlock your potential and develop a common language and understanding of design thinking. We'll introduce the concepts of design thinking processes and offer a reliable approach for creative problem solving. During this video, your screen will occasionally go dark like this, and an on-screen prompt will ask you to pause your video. Brief instructions will ask that you complete work in your seminar workbook. You can download a copy of this seminar workbook on our course site or at the Greg Learning Facebook store. Before we get started, note that page numbers are provided on slide to help you follow along in your seminar workbook. Our Creative Leadership Seminar is designed to provide you simple and beneficial learning. The experience is arranged to help you learn, do, and explore. Your seminar workbook is organized in these three areas. Learn, useful information to help you acquire knowledge and gain insight. Do, try out what you've learned with an activity individually or in a group. Explore, resources for you to go deeper and discover more. Now, let's move on to an important part of our seminar, design thinking. It's a mindset, almost a way of life. Design thinking starts with people and their needs. It opens you as a leader up to new directions and perspectives. And the more you exercise the design thinking muscle, the better you get at it. Each time you engage with the process, you end up feeling more capable, more creative in your leadership. From time to time through the rest of the seminar, I'm going to give you some tips. Here's your first tip. Give yourself permission to step outside of your comfort zone. For some, this can feel strange or messy, but just dive in and stick to it. It's a first and critically important part of the design thinking process. And also, don't put pressure on yourself. This experience isn't about trying to come up with a perfect idea in a few minutes. It's about learning a process and practicing that process of design thinking. And finally for now, frame your problems as questions. Use the how might we statement as optimistic invitations to explore more. These are three important little words. The how is solutions oriented. The might encourages optimism and the we is collaborative. So now for an activity, your design thinking project. You have a problem at work and for this seminar, we're going to use it to explore the design thinking process. Your leadership team has asked you to solve this problem. You've been given the freedom to improve the problem with new and creative ideas. So here's your direction. Read the problem statement in your seminar workbook and identify how this problem interests you. Press pause now to complete this activity in your workbook. When you're finished, press play to continue. Here's the problem statement that we're going to use as we explore design thinking. In the activities ahead, you'll go through the phases of design thinking and come up with new ideas as solutions to this problem. How might we make the weekly work meeting something everyone looks forward to? When run effectively, meetings spark collaboration and fuel conversation, but too often they cause dread or apathy. They take you away from your work and prompt you to stress about things that you shouldn't be doing instead. If meetings were engaging, interactive, and playful, what would that look like? Could you design a meeting where everyone looked forward to attending? This problem will act as our common thread in our activities ahead. But first, let's take a look at these three eyes of design thinking. I teach design thinking in three main phases, what I call the three eyes of innovation. First, inspiration. Inspire new thinking by discovering what people really need. Then, ideation. Push past obvious solutions to come up with breakthrough ideas and make those ideas tangible. And third and finally, implementation. Craft a human story that inspires others towards action. Let's explore each of these steps in a bit more detail and practice along the way. Let's start out with what might be the most important activity in your entire seminar experience, your design thinking map. For the rest of the seminar, you'll explore each phase of the design thinking process to creatively solve, solve the problem that we stated earlier. So here's a couple of directions. Complete your design thinking activities and then jot down a summary of your experiences in the design thinking map on page 18 of your workbook. 
Press pause now to take a look at page 18 in your design thinking map. When you're finished, press play to continue with the seminar. So here's your design thinking map. Each step builds on the previous one, so you'll need to complete this experience in order. By the end of these activities, you'll have a snapshot of your design thinking journey and the tools to use when tackling problems in the future. As you complete activities, summarize your experience in the design thinking map on page 18 of your workbook. Design thinking begins with empathy, understanding the needs of who you're designing for. Observing people's natural behaviors helps you discover their unmet needs. Sometimes you can't just ask people what they need. You need to listen with your eyes and emphasize. So we're gonna take a minute to get curious about real people, spark fresh thinking on how we can make their world better. Here's six things we're going to consider when observing others. One, look for things that prompt behavior. Two, look for adaptations. Three, look for what people care about. Four, look for body language. Five, look for patterns, and six, look for the unexpected. Let's talk about each in a little more detail. So first, we're gonna look for things that prompt behavior. Some behavior triggers are obvious, like signs that tell us where to go. Others are more subtle, like a line printed on a train platform to warn passengers to stand away from the edge. Number two, look for adaptations. Adaptations are hacks or workarounds that people come up with to make something work better for themselves. What does the adaptation tell you about their needs? Number three, look for what people care about. You can tell a lot about someone from the stories they tell and the things they surround themselves with. When you know what people care about, you immediately learn what they value. Four, look for body language. People smile when they're delighted and slouch when they're tired or detached. Interpreting people's nonverbal language is an easy guide to gauge their needs and better understand what they need. And finally, number six, look for the unexpected. Things that are hidden or stand out in surprising ways often invite you to explore a deeper story. Be curious about what stands out and what remains hidden. Observations is one of the best ways to start gathering inspiration. It can reveal what people really need. Here's a tip. Get curious about why. Pay attention to what people are doing and the choices they're making. These things will tell you what really matters to someone. Then get curious about why they're doing it, which often reveals an unmet need. And here's another tip. There's no right or wrong. Don't worry about identifying the right need. People have many needs, some obvious, others hidden. Ask yourself, do I feel something for this person that inspires me to do something? You're on the right track if you're starting to empathize. For this activity, we've talked to three people about their weekly meeting experience. No surprises here, they weren't entirely thrilled with the current state of affairs. Below you'll find three pictures and statements individuals made about their meeting experience. Follow these directions to observe for inspiration. First, for each photo, get curious about the person's needs and motivation. Take a look at the photo and the statement they make. Then, select one photo to dig deeper and make some observations beginning with your empathy. Answer the observation questions for the photo you choose. Press pause now to complete this activity in your workbook. When you're finished, press play to continue. So let's take a look at what our three friends said. First, John says meetings are run by the same few people each week, and we cover the same topics. To me, at least, meetings are a giant time suck. And then Kara says, our team meetings go too long. My trick to surviving is to bring snacks or other distractions. And then finally, our friend Jose says, being new to this organization, I don't always know what's going on or who's who. I'd love to use this time to get to know my team better. So here are some reflection questions to help you observe. First, what's one thing you observe? Don't interpret, just describe what you see. Then number two, why might this be happening? Here's where you interpret. 
think in terms of motivations and unmet needs. And finally, this inspires me to think about solutions that think in terms of ideas that could meet needs you observe. And now here's a couple of ways that you can further explore this topic. It's for practice. As an individual, practice staying curious as you commute to work today. Keep an eye out for unmet needs by looking for patterns or the unexpected. Jot down a few things that inspire you when you arrive. And with your team, tune into the nuances of how people work on your team. Observe how the environment, the space, tools, etc. impact collaboration. Focus on what people care about and how their body language reflects their energy level and level of commitment. Ideation consists of two distinct but interrelated parts. First, generating ideas, and second, making those ideas tangible. For ideation, practice divergent thinking. Going broad to consider many solutions, even wild ones. It's our goal here to stretch beyond the obvious. Odd and unexpected things help spark new ways of thinking. Coming up with lots of ideas helps you consider many solutions to a problem. This is divergent thinking. Too often, teams will stop at the first good idea. Getting to truly innovative ideas means pushing past the obvious. So here's a couple of divergent thinking tips. Go wild for ideas. Sometimes, there's a, not a whole lot of difference between the ridiculous and the brilliant. Push yourself to imagine beyond what's comfortable or familiar. And then secondly, don't judge your thinking. We often limit our thinking by judging ourselves and worrying about what others think. But when you resist those urges, you'll be amazed at how much more creative you feel. Press pause now to complete this activity in your workbook. When you're finished, press play to continue. Still on page 24, let's continue the mashup. Here's some more directions. Pass your workbook to a partner or share your thoughts with someone you interact with on a regular basis. Have them create three random connections, pairing one item from each category. If you're not with someone right now, just do it yourself, but make sure your pairings are random. For each combination, then, you should come up with a new idea inspired by the mashup. Briefly describe your idea and value it relates to the problem. If you're stuck, think back to the inspiration you gathered. What unmet need did you observe? Try to come up with ideas that address that. In a few short words, jot your thoughts down on your design thinking map back on page 18 when you're complete. Press pause now to complete this activity in your workbook. When you're finished, press play to continue with the seminar. So here's one key tip as you're thinking about the mashup. After completing the activity, you might be wondering, is there room for this type of play at work? How could I justify using this activity with my team? Play is the key to innovation. Bringing play to work means creating space for the team to discover, fail, and try new ideas. Play can actually spark shifts in mindset that can lead to creative solutions that answers today's complex challenges. And now, a couple of tips for practice. First, as an individual, resist the urge to jump in on the first viable idea this week. Be bold. Push yourself to generate at least five more ideas. Sometimes it can hurt a little, but it gets easier over time. This is good practice to get you to more innovative solutions. And then with your team, design in quick spurts with your team to generate lots of possible solutions. Maybe you facilitate a brainstorm or try the mashup to encourage collaboration and divergent thinking. In these sessions, go for quantity. This means deferring judgment and welcoming bold, even ridiculous ideas. So you've just generated ideas. Now you'll make your ideas tangible. 
One of the best ways to make a creative idea more tangible is to prototype. Prototypes help you learn from failure early and inexpensively and invite others to react to your idea. Prototyping allows us to get feedback from other people, and that's great. Think of your prototype as a prop that invites others to experience your idea and helps you transform an abstract concept into a meaningful product or service. Sketching is a fundamental skill of prototyping and one of the many ways you can make your ideas tangible. It's a great way to communicate your idea to yourself and someone else. and include people in your sketches. We often see people sketching their ideas and how it looks and works, but it's important to visualize how others will interact with your product or service. That nuance will help you consider your idea from a more human-centered or empathetic lens. So now let's sketch it. Sketching is one of the many ways you can make your ideas tangible. The problem is people think they're either good at sketching or not. In reality, it's like any skill, it improves with practice, so here's some directions. First, pick one mashup description from our previous activity. Then sketch your ideas in the two ways directed in the space provided to you in your workbook. Press pause now to complete this activity in your seminar workbook. When you're finished, press play to continue the seminar. Before we go on, here's a tip. Make ideas tangible with iterations. Making ideas tangible doesn't just stop with a sketch or two. It's often the longest step in design thinking. You test out many variations, learn from people, refine prototypes, and then test it again. It's an iterative process. So explore making ideas tangible with a couple of things. First, as an individual, practice getting your hands dirty this week. Create early, rough representations of your ideas and get them in front of others for feedback. Don't sell your idea or defend it. Ask open questions to help you learn how to improve it. And with your team, think about holding a prototyping session. Provide a challenge and ask everyone to build something in 30 minutes. Use whatever materials you have, papers, pens, pipe cleaners, chalkboard, whatever it is. This process will create momentum for your team and help you quickly learn what does and doesn't work. Now it's time to share the story with others. Storytelling help inspires other towards actions and helps them connect with your ideas. Here are a few suggestions to help elevate your storytelling. Make it personal, get emotional, use anecdote and reflection, and include a call to action. Let's dig a, a little deeper. Personal stories resonate with us and move us as human beings. And there's just something sticky about character-driven narrative. Painting a word picture of a real person with real issues or real successes is much more powerful than information alone. A lot of people will tell you otherwise, but vulnerability is okay, so get a little emotional. Bring your full self into your story. You don't need to get melodramatic, but be real. Bring enthusiasm, energy, and empathy. Use anecdote and reflection. The stories that grab us the most have two basic components in varied combinations anecdote and reflection. This happened, then that happened, that's anecdote. This simple sequencing carries people through your story. Reflection then is where you help your audience make sense of what they've just heard. You want your audience to feel what you've described. Remind them why your story matters. I'm telling you this story because... Finally, consider including a call to action. People too often get caught up in the presentation they're making. They forget what they're trying to achieve. Always have an ask at the end. What do you want people to do after hearing your story? Don't leave this open to interpretation. Spell it out for your audience. Here's a couple of tips. Talk your story out. If you get stuck, ask yourself, what's my story really about? Then answer yourself by talking naturally. Don't worry about capturing what you're saying in writing. You'll be amazed what comes when you just let yourself talk. You can always record your answers to help you remember. And consider your audience. Not every story will resonate with everyone. People are complex, so are their needs. When I see a story fall flat, it's often because the tone, message, or emotional hook wasn't the right one for a specific audience. 
Imagine you're presenting a 90 second pitch for a panel of judges. Consider the factors you'd need to keep the audience in mind. In this activity, choose one of your idea sketches and describe why the idea matters to people. Remember our problem statement, how might we make the weekly work meeting something everyone looks forward to? Now, describe why your idea matters to the people with a story. Here's some directions. First, select one of your idea sketches and summarize the sketch in the space provided in your workbook. Then, pick one of the storytelling suggestions you've learned. Write your story using the guidance provided in your seminar workbook. Using your notes, practice your story on a small group or with a friend over the course of time. Press pause now to complete this activity in your seminar workbook. When you're finished, press play to continue. Let's close this section with a storytelling tip. Share your story early and often. In leadership, we tell stories to inspire momentum in others. As with prototyping, it's important to share early and often. That way, you can see how your story is received and refine it accordingly. Reception is everything here. With every share, you can tighten your story and make it more human-centered. That's the goal, to invite others to feel, empathize, and be moved. Here's a couple of ideas to help you practice and explore the topic of storytelling more. First, as an individual, next time you have a good idea for an impact story, share it with a colleague. Kick the tires, test it out. It might be a little uncomfortable, but it'll help you improve. And as a team, think about hosting a storytelling session. This will help your team unpack the idea and the four suggestions in this seminar in a way where you can give each other great feedback. Learning the skills of design thinking is like learning a musical instrument. It takes practice. You now understand the basics of design thinking, but it's through ongoing practice that you gain mastery and true creative confidence. Look for moments when you can apply these skills that you've learned here in our seminar today in your current work. The key is to keep doing it and adapting it to your context.